stop demanding the setup of a new mechanism to investigate election irregularity, while at the same time his demonstrator held up a big banner stating this very demand. Mr. Samranzi said this on the second day, and this is the first point. Secondly, he said, I accept the allocation of 68 seats of the National Assembly for the CPP and 55 seats for the CNRP. And he repeated this a few times. That means he already acknowledged at the negotiation table the 68 versus 55 seats. We have a clear voice recording and written note about that, and we don't know whether they are betraying each other or cheating each other. We can distribute the written notes we took should they need them, and if they take further risk, we will post the recording of his voice on Facebook. He clearly acknowledged 68 versus 55 seat. Thirdly, he affirmed that his side will support Samdai as Prime Minister. He used the word to affirm Samdai as Prime Minister. I asked him to correct what he said. This is not a compromise because the 68 seat that the CPP won does not come from a compromise but from the votes given by the people. Neither do I need their support to be Prime Minister, as this is the people's decision. Now, if he mobilized the people to hold further demonstration, it is pointless because their leader has already recognized the election result at this meeting. Now, if he takes the risk of staging further demonstration, we will release uh, that document for the people to judge his different words in the meeting and outside the meeting. We will broadcast his voice if he still constantly changes his position. He already recognized, firstly, to have ceased uh, demanding the setup of irregularities investigation commission. Secondly, to have accepted the 68 seat of the National Assembly for the CPP and 55 seat for the CNRP. And thirdly, to support Samdai as Prime Minister. However, he continued, I would ask for a concession from your side so that people from my side will become the president of the National Assembly and how to make arrangement so that both sides would have balance in the permanent commissions. I ask him immediately, are you interested in positions or in the balance of power? He demanded not only the chair of the six commissions, we had offered them, but he was also demanding the position of President of the National Assembly. The story goes like that. The problem was not because of the result of the election, but because of their demands for the President and the six of the Commission have not been met. I would leave this to our people to judge whether they wish to join these opposition leader in a demonstration. They should ask themselves why they should join them when their leaders already recognize the election result. The problems then was the CPP does not agree to offer them the position of the president and half of the commissions of the National Assembly. We cannot afford their demand because that would tie our hands when we need to pass important law. For example, 
the annual budget law. Normally, we send the letter of request to the president of the National Assembly, to the president, not to the vice president. If the president were to read and throw away such a letter, we would die. I briefly remember what I said then that it is the first time in history that I heard and saw a political party with minority support demanded to have the post of President of the National Assembly. You may tell me if there are any in the world. I do not talk about the U.S. administration, which has adopted a presidential system of government. Sometimes there, the president and his party hold the post of president and at the same time also control both the lower house and the upper house in Congress. Or sometimes the party of the president has a majority in the lower house but is in a minority in the upper house. In the U.S., the upper house is stronger than the lower house. Instead, I would like to talk about the parliamentary democracy similar to our country. In Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and others, the party that won the election hold the post of President of the National Assembly, including France, which has adopted a semi-presidential system. In France, people vote separately to choose the president and the National Assembly. The National Assembly elected its president and approved the formation of the government. Therefore, any party that wins the election holds the post of the president of the National Assembly and it votes to choose the prime minister. It is a very odd situation in Cambodia. They do not join the National Assembly session, not because they reject the election result, but because they cannot have the post of the President of the National Assembly. As on that day, Cho Hon San revealed to the people what His Excellency Sam Rensi really demanded was indeed the position of President of the National Assembly, as he has said in several places both inside and outside the country, and as echoed by some media. For instance, on 25th September 2013, at the Cambodian National Rescue Party, Party's office in Chang Rai Le, Phnom Penh, His Excellency Sam Reng Si said, If we want to start rebuilding the country, the first step is to strike a balance of powers. That is, the Cambodian People Party provisionally leads the executive body and the Cambodia National Rescue Party provisionally leads the legislative body while waiting for the facts to be revealed concerning the recent election result. Hence, the reiterations on the electoral irregularity or the demand for the establishment of an independent committee was just an excuse to only hide their trick. How long will people keep believing the deception of the opposition party? To serve their ill purpose, the opposition party's leaders have been going around collecting thumbprints of people on a petition to the United Nations asking this August organization to reject the election result. The National Assembly and the newly appointed royal government of the fifth mandate. However, such an attempt failed as said by His Excellency Ka Kum Hoon, minister attached it to the Prime Minister in the afternoon of 10 October 2013. Following the meeting between Samdai De Cho Hon San and His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, 
during the Asian Summit in Bandar Seri Bingawan, Brunei Jerusalem. As it can be seen, the meeting between Samrat Dechu Prime Minister and the Secretary General of the United Nations was a bilateral dialogue called by the Secretary General of the United Nations. At the meeting, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon congratulated and expressed his appreciation to Samrat Dechu Prime Minister for the victory in the election for the fifth mandate. Besides, he welcomed the election which was conducted in a smooth and peaceful manner. Unlike the accusation of the opposition party of electoral fraud and of interminating and threatening voters, the opposition party activists were in fact, in fact the masterminds and the ones who committed aggressive acts provoking troubles and violence, preventing people from voting and causing unrest in the society. By such act as destroying and burning the vehicles of the Phnom Penh military police on election day and blocking the voter in the VM district from voting. Alleging those voters were Yun, Vietnamese, and so on. Another unrest provoking act was that the opposition party invented and publicized its own provisional election result proclaiming that their party had won the election. The reality that the Cambodia People Party received 3.2 million votes and the Cambodian National Rescue Party received only 2.9 million votes. As a matter of fact, the accurate election result in this fifth mandate that the Cambodia People Party won 68 seats and the Cambodian National Rescue Party only 55 seats. However, the, the Cambodian National Rescue Party make an exaggerated claim that their parties won 63 seats and sometimes they have even said they won 73 seats or 76 seats without providing any proof. The opposition party should put an end to the culture of manipulation by labelling other political parties while itself have been committed a wild array of immoral acts, especially inciting racial discrimination and hatred. Despite such acts committed by opposition, none of the human rights organizations, which usually proclaim themselves to be the defenders and promoters of human rights, have issued any statement to condemn those acts. This show that those human rights organizations have been applying double standard on human rights in Cambodia. In contradiction to the allegation by the opposition party, what is striking is that the international election observers from ICAP and CAPD all highly evaluated this election, showing that multi-party liberal democracies in Cambodia has been firmly established. Cambodia is a sovereign state with a rule of law having a clear judicial mechanism and regulations in a place with regard to election and to the resolution of electoral dispute. The NEC announced the provincial election results on 12 August 2013 and all complaints of irregularity were transparently and impartially settled by the NEC and the Constitutional Council before the official election result were announced on the 8th September 2013. The royal message of His Majesty the King did 30th August 2013 clearly stated that any resolution to the national conflicts should be based on the constitution and refer to the competent institution 
as set forth in our constitution and laws. In short, the opposition party does not have any justification to clearly prove that they deserve to be the leaders of a political party. Rather, they exploit the power of manipulation, lies and misleading the public. Although the opposition parties and its allies have been using all tracks in order to destroy the election result, the truth remains. The National Assembly and the Royal Government were formed and have been performing their duty in accordance with the Constitution and the law without any obstacle. His Excellency Deputy Prime Minister Sok An. As we all know, our National Assembly is composed of 123 seats. So, 50% plus 1 equal 63 seats. Thus, if a political party received at least 63 seats of the National Assembly, that party can form a government by its own, without any deadlock or problem at all. Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. I would like to announce the implementation of the rectangular strategy phase three from now on. Thank you.